What's up, guys? Riving to the third back here at IPL3 Origins. We are on Bally's Casino, just uh, Bally's Casino and Resort. Amazing, uh, awesome event they've been putting on so far. I am joined here by Elements of CLG and Tree What's Eskimo up? of What's VA. Up? These guys have played over the weekend. Unfortunate outcomes for them, but they still played very strong in their matches. And uh, CLG coming out 2-0 on their first day. Obviously, V8 not doing so much as well, <laughs> or uh, as well, I should say, um, but still playing very strong. A new team coming to light, and that's really awesome to see. And hopefully, we can see you guys in more tournaments and obviously doing a lot better because of the skill you guys do provide in the League of Legends community. And it's exactly what we want is more teams to come out in the professional league. So get your team together and get it ready for season two. So we're going to start off with a, little, a few questions here before we jump into the final matchup. That is going to start uh, in a little bit, but we're going to go through this as the third and fourth match plays and allow you to uh, know what happened in that. So coming into this final matchup, the games you guys have all seen this weekend and you've played in, you know, what's the intensity around here at the casino? Um, I think intensity-wise... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. yes. I, I got You are mic'd. I have one equipped, actually. <laughs> um, intensity-wise... I'd say it's about the same as any other tournament. Okay. People, I mean, generally all the players um, like each other. I mean, me and Trias come out, we've got beef online. In real life, I have no problem with it. Like, that's what I mean. Like, everyone's, everyone's super chill around here. Like, no one's mm -hmm. like, oh, I hate those guys. It's just everyone's relaxed. Come game time, you know, win or lose, I'm going to go over, shake the guy's hand, and we're going to be buddies yeah. an hour later. Right on, right on. How are you feeling, uh, Trias come out? Um, Yeah, I mean, the intensity was great, actually. Like, uh, there was definitely a lot of pressure in our first game against EG, and a lot of people on my team, basically, they had never played in a tournament like this before. It's like the first major one they made it to, and they were really feeling it. The nerves definitely played an impact on the game. Every team had nerves. And, uh, I mean, I'm sure going into the finals, these guys are going to have a ton of nerves. It's going to be how they deal with that, like, it's totally different playing in a LAN than it is playing online, yeah, that's for sure. Definitely. Yeah, that's something that Freak and I have been talking about all weekend as well, and uh, something I talked with some of the StarCraft players that are the best from Korea. They're like, you know, when we're in that booth, we're still good, but that good goes like this, and you <laughs> yeah. play at this level of good just despite all those nerves. So, you know, coming into here, your first LAN event, obviously doing better in the next ones. A lot to learn from these, so that's awesome. Coming for the finals now, coming into the finals in this uh, upcoming match, who do you guys feel has the upper hand? It's really been a lot of Dignitas. Epic kind of just turned it around, though. Did that surprise you guys at all? Um, no, EG is always that team, though. EG is okay. like, we don't practice, we don't do anything, yet when it comes like time for tournament play, <laughs> like we're still going like, to go in there you know, mess some stuff up. Um, but at the same time, Dignitas has you know, really stepped up their game. Uh, they were old, rock solid. Right. And Rock Solid was like a, like a fourth, third place team for a really long time, for like almost a year. And now they, I think they picked up like two players, I think, and it just totally changed their whole team composition. And they're really good now. Like they really, as you can see, get stuff done. They have they have objectives. They just they make calls and it yeah. gets done. They they really really great uh, communication that they have. I think is like their strongest their strongest suit is this. they communicate so well. Everything is precisely done. All their timers are perfect. Like, mm -hmm. we know their timers are coming up, too, but they were already there. Everyone's already there. And yeah, like, their, their shift right. of the entire map yeah. was happening, like, yeah. 20 seconds before that. They They're were really, uh, yeah, yeah. well-focused. And I think that's going to come into play. And I, I'd probably say 2-1 to one versus over EG because they have that. All right, Ian, same question. Um, yeah, I would actually, a lot of the points that Elements were making, very good. Like, Dignitas has been playing great lately. Like, I used to think that one of their, like, their support player, Locust, I used to think that guy, maybe not the greatest. Like, he's, he's a pro player. He's very good. But, I mean, after watching his Sona that game, that ultimate on the Galio when he flashed in, I was like, there, there's like less than a quarter second reaction time that you have to do that to hit the Galio. And it canceled Hotshot's ult immediately and won them the fight hardcore. And, I mean, plays like that, like, when you have the player that I thought was your weaker player doing a play like that, suddenly the whole team is just super strong. And on top of that, like, they were controlling Dragon great. But, uh, like, overall, they've just made a great showing. But I think EG has actually done very similar. Like, they're, they're playing with Vayne very well. They're protecting the Vayne. Westrice has made some crazy plays with Vayne. And uh, from talking with the players, EG said that they're actually pretty confident against Dignitas, like, through scrims and everything. So I'm starting to think that EG might actually take it 2-1. I think it's definitely going to be a close right. series, though. All right, so coming in with both of these teams, Dignitas and uh, Epic Gamer, both having subs, it really hasn't seemed to affect them too much. They've been coming out on top. It, are uh, the subs over... Uh, I wouldn't say overlooked, because that means they aren't being looked at, but are they over-exaggerated? Is it just like they play with these players all the time? It's really not that big of a deal that they're in tournament with them. Is, is it causing them, you know, to have to practice more, or is it really just something that fits in? 
Uh, it really depends on what, like, who's who in a team, okay. right? So uh, it depends if they can jump into that role and just you know successfully go. Like when we took Boy Boy in, uh, that was kind of a new thing for us because we, we ran like a double bruiser instead of you know mm -hmm. an AP and bruiser, and it turned out to work incredibly well. Like yeah, we just flowed. Like strong. we Boy Boy just came in, and we're like. Yeah, like, what's up? Like, we've been playing with you for like years. Like, that's what it felt like. And some guys really join teams like that. Awesome. But a lot of guys, um, sometimes they don't meld that well. And that can be making or breaking a team with a sub. But generally, yeah, we know these guys. Like, I've known, we've all known Crumbs forever. He's, you know, mm -hmm. played with him in high elo. And he just jumped right in because he knows everybody, right? So it's easy to make that transition. But sometimes, you know, not so easy. And that can, as I said, really make or break your team. Right on. You feel the same way, Jessica? Well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. Especially when you have uh, subs who can play champions that are really powerful in the current meta. Like, uh, Anivia not being played nearly enough, and Crumbs' Anivia is, like, sick. It's one of his best champions. And same thing with Losisero. Like, Morgana super strong in this patch. Same thing, Ryze is really strong in this patch. And Losisero's his two most played are Morgana and Ryze. Like, he's all over the place with them. So when, when their main champions that they're playing on the solo queue ladder that they aren't with the teams, are the champions that the teams want to be playing, it's a lot right. easier to sub in because you're like, yeah, I can play like the best champion right now. <laughs> yeah, it'd, it'd be useful for you guys to have me for that tournament. Oh, who are you guys looking for in each team coming up here you think is really going to shine through? We know we've seen uh, Scara from Dignitas doing a lot of things. Obviously, Westrice doing a lot for his team as well. Who, who do you think is really going to come out here? Is it going to be from the jungle? Are we going to see a lot of lane efficiency from either of these teams? Where do you think Dignitas would capitalize and also Epic is going to capitalize in the game if they happen? Um, I think Dignitas might capitalize on a sneaky Katarina. Uh, I know Skara is like very, very good Katarina, and I, just, I think that if he gets it, he can really clean up and make the make a win for their team. Right on. Yeah, um, for me, I wouldn't go with so much a specific pick as I think Dignitas is just going to try and capitalize on those dragons. They've been doing it all all tournaments so far, and I think Epic's going to go with the unconventional, like that Heimer pick. That was really strong. That comp. I think they might actually go with the Heimer pick and do some kind of protection comp around Heimer, and that, that could be crazy to see again. All right, guys, awesome. Thanks for the insight. Rivington III here, joined by Elements from CLG and Tree Eskimo of V8, guys, giving us a little bit of a panel talk. Not enough time for QA because we are going to give you the final match here in just a few minutes. We're going to cut to commercial, and we're going to be back with more League of Legends action here at IPL3 Origins.